Here are the features for the 080 release. First, we greatly enhanced the GCA export. The character on the right, Milo, is from GCA. And you can see that it contains pretty much all of the data that GCS does now. The GCS import has also been expanded. Please read the Google Doc for instructions on how to get this to work. The old Fantasy Grounds export is no longer valid. The next feature is the Apply Damage dialog, or as I like to call it, the Damage Calculator. If damage is rolled and appears in the chat window, you can see that it has a draggable element. If you drag this onto a character sheet, the Apply Damage dialog will appear. The GM can type in any number they want and apply it to hit points or fatigue points and then they can press the apply or apply quietly. Apply will print a public chat message that everybody will see and apply quietly will print a chat message just to the GM and the owner of this character. So in this case, just myself. Of course, everyone knows that damage in GURPS is not always simple. So we have a system setting. You can turn off the simple damage dialog and now when you apply damage you see this. Now the fields across the top are exactly the same. If the GM just wants to override this and say look I'm applying two points of damage there you've applied two points of damage. Of course you can always just hit close you don't have to apply the damage but if you want, you can override or set the uh, functions below and in the results window down here, it will do the damage calculation for you. So in this particular case, we default to torso. We parsed the input text and saw that it was most likely cutting. But the GM can override this. The GM can pick whichever location they want. They can even hit a random location. Uh, or the GM can just override it and say, no, this we're dealing with two points of DR here. Uh, they can also select the large area injury, and if you're not certain what that is, you can click this link, and if you have the basic set installed, then it'll open to that page and show you the rule for what large area injury is. Same thing happens here in the wounding mod uh, modifiers. The GM can override anything that comes in. They can set it to no modifier. They can enter their own modifier. Everything can be overridden by the GM. Now the functions on the right are still being developed, although ranged does work. So if this is a ranged attack and you're past the half damage distance, so it only does half damage, you can select this and it will calculate that for you. And as before, the GM can just, they can apply it publicly or they can apply it privately. So I'll apply it privately. The next feature in the release is the enhanced parsing of the on-the-fly formulas. We can now select skills, spells, or attacks, melee or ranged. The format is described in the Google Doc, but you can test it out in the chat window because now the chat window parses the on-the-fly formula. So if I want to put the brawling skill, square bracket, s colon brawl, there's an implied asterisk at the end of this so it it'll create a little button in the chat window and if a user clicks it it will apply it to the last character they have selected. So in this case, if I hit Brawl, it should roll the Brawling skill of Bog. There you go. This can be very useful for a GM working with a new player that maybe can't quite figure out what they need to do next. The GM can whisper to them and tell them that they need to roll the skill First Aid. And a whisper will appear to them, and they can click on this, and it will roll that skill on their character. 
Because the chat log can parse on the fly formulas, you can now include on the fly formulas in roll tables. To the right, you can see some examples of this roll table. Down here at the bottom is an A for an attack. This will search through melee attacks and then range attacks to try to match this name. For the S colon prompt, it searches through skills first and then spells. Again, see the Google Doc for explanation of how to define these and how to best match to your skill, spell, or attack. This next feature deals with organizing your data on your character sheet. You can now drag and drop advantages, skills, and spells into new locations. Let's say this user wants to put all their disadvantages near the bottom. They can drag bloodlust down to here and it will appear at the bottom. Of course, you can arrange your skills. You can move them around however you want. And if you get it totally out of whack, you can double click on the title bar and it will sort ascending or descending. Equipment is handled slightly differently. We have two lists, the carried list and the other equipment list. And to switch between the two, you drag an item and drop it on the header and it will move to the new list. If you drag an item and drop it on another item, it will ask you, do you mean to add that into the list before that item or inside that item? I will add it into the pouch. Now you'll notice the weight calculation up here. If I move this balance throwing ax out of the carried equipment into other equipment, the calculation updates. It, however, does not change the encumbrance level. If you want to do that, you have to go to the editor to do that manually. We do not calculate that on our own. Now you can change items in the list and like all the other lists, if you double click on them, they will ask you if you want to sort it ascending or descending. However, this only sorts the first level items. It does not sort the items inside a container, like, for example, this armor. And the final feature, besides all the bug fixes, is for users who have separate characters and campaigns PDFs. We have a system setting which allows you to select separate PDFs. You define the character's PDF with code B and the campaign's PDF with code BX. When you test the campaign's code, it should open to page 340. Set your offset accordingly. When you've done so, then all of the B links will go to their appropriate PDF. You do not have to rewrite any of these as BX the internal code will do that for you. And as always, thank you for watching.